Welcome back, everybody. Sorry for missing last week. Uh, I have been absolutely swamped with work over the past two weeks. Uh, we finally got some good help at my store, so hopefully I'll have more time. But uh, we were planning on doing something else this week, but neither of us had time to read it. So instead, we're just going to talk about Death Note, because we both remember that pretty well. Um, kind of out of necessity, but hopefully we'll have some interesting things to say. Um, so what say ye, Rinchan? What say ye to the people, the good people? I, I, I say welcome back. Thank you for listening. Again, uh, as every week, except last week, um, you didn't expect that note, so it's a surprise. Nobody That's, expects uh, the Spanish uh, Inquisition. <laughs> it's been talked to death pretty much you can you can pull up uh maybe a hundred videos on youtube about some analysis and stuff um that's but, sure you know, but they don't have people... our brains they don't have exactly. our experience so maybe yes, we'll say something we... different maybe 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 <laughs> maybe and we're the manga bums you have to remember that so... right so so we're the manga bums, and yes. By the way, <laughs> by the way, on Twitch, your topic is mahjong. I don't know. Is it that. still? I changed it twice. I hate Twitch. I don't know, I don't know if that note is really about mahjong. Maybe. It, well, uh, maybe can, what about that? Like I mean, do you think that Light could yeah, play mahjong? Oh, oh, oh! That would be that would be an interesting manga. Actually. Why not? <laughs> How about Death Note mahjong? <laughs> the, uh, yeah. and, and and see and see Raito and Edu uh fight in 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 a in a epic margin game. That 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 yeah. So oh yeah, man. Well, no, 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 no. It could it could be like a series that's set in Mu, right? It could be set in like the the place that like people go after they oh, use the yeah. Death Note. Yeah, because Light and L yeah. are both there now, right? And so, like, they could play Mahjong with, I don't know, well, Mu is nothingness anyway, though, right? Yeah, but they can, they can like, play with uh, the Shinigamis. They yes, with the like Shinigami, just... okay, sure, sure, yeah, the Shinigami, well, yeah, okay, so the Shinigami can pull them from Mu into their world, and then they can play, like, uh, Death Reaper Mahjong, uh, <laughs> with, like, bones as tiles or something, you know, like, oh, spooky, <laughs> scary bones. <laughs> See, we already, we like, already started. Like, carved with their, like, fingernails or something. We already started great. Like this is the perfect opening for any podcast. <laughs> no, well, it, uh, it's it could happen. I can totally see it, dude. I can totally see a Death Note Mahjong spinoff series. It's just that like it. you know it probably wouldn't be um, palatable to Western audiences because, like, I don't know, um, they don't really know Mahjong that well yet. I feel like the day is coming when Mahjong will be played by everyone all over the world. But until that day, I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. that day like will be the day that the Death Note uh, Mahjong manga comes out. But enough about that. Um, <laughs> well, no, let's let's start Death yes. Note. Like first, tell me tell me how like how old were you? When did you read or watch it? Right. Um, what was your first experience? Yeah. Well, actually, it was like one of the first um, anime that I watched after like the basic like Shonen, like Naruto, Bleach, One Piece type stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It was. It was like I remember a uh, a girl that I had known since elementary school uh, first uh, said like, "Oh, you know, well, I like anime, but you know, people have been recommending me this Death Note thing, and it kind of seems a little too dark for me." You know, and I was like, oh, okay. And I just kind of like put it in the back of my mind for a while until eventually I was just bored. And like, I think I was, I was just looking for some random anime to watch. I was watching like, what? Oh, like Lucky Star and like freaking the Maple Story anime and stuff like on this like one website. And Death Note was also there. <laughs> so, <laughs> very similar teams there. <laughs> yeah. So I just was like, okay, well, I've at least heard of this one, so I'll give it a try, you know, and freaking wound up loving it, you know. And that is, I would say, Death Note is kind of like what got me on the like psycho psychological anime slash manga trajectory that eventually led to Kaiji and Akagi and 
the rest. Oh, oh, so that note was before uh, Fukumoto stuff. Oh, of course, dude. You think I'm going to start with Kaiji? <laughs> well, dude, I guess some people might. I don't know. There, I mean, there's so many people in the world. Surely somebody has. But um, I would say it's more typical for, you You know, you start with the Shonen stuff, then you get tired of that because, you know, it gets old after a while. And then you move on to, like, maybe, uh, I don't know, you either go in the, like, uh, freaking... <laughs> What what do you what would you classify that as like uh, I don't know cutesy like school life direction or you go in the like psycho psychological direction uh, or any other direction you know you branch off in a certain direction and like Death Note is like right at the beginning of the like psychological manga direction I feel like yeah um yeah so, well, well yeah how about you well. I was just in the phase of um, watching anime all the time. Um, I was a teenager, and Death Note had just like this kind of appeal that uh, Yagami Raito is like this student who is like like studying hard and genius, and he he knows everything and stuff, and that he gets like this notebook and that he can basically kill anybody whenever he wants and immediately i was like i was like pulled in like this is a very great concept it is um, a really cool concept um i wonder how he came up with it even did he did, did do you know any any other stuff from him that he worked on well i do remember reading like chapter zero and chapter zero was kind of just all about um this kind of ordinary geeky kid who like uses the death note to like kill a school bully and then regrets it like immediately after and like you know that drives him to like despair and depression and like you know it ends on a really like somber note if i remember right something like that so it might have been something like that like just the thought of like oh these these school bullies wouldn't it be great if i had like a death note that i could just write their date write their name down and just like boom, they'd be dead, and I wouldn't have to worry about them anymore. Maybe it was something like that. Um, you know what's interesting? I just I just uh, pulled up the the author like Obata, and it seems his first uh, successful work was uh, Hikaru no Go. Was he, oh, it, what? It was the same guy? Are you serious? Yes. Yes. Hikaru it, no it, Go. It, yes. Those are such different series. What? Yes. And are you joking me? Like, no, I'm not joking. It. He's the same guy who wrote. Uh, Death Note, and he wrote like the biggest three things he did was uh, Hikaru no Go, Death Note, and Bakuman. Uh, we can talk a little bit about Bakuman after uh, Death Note. It's obvious that the same guy who did Death Note did Bakuman because of the art and stuff. But what, what, what I'm fascinated right now, I didn't expect this, is that we mentioned like some Death Note Mahjong, <laughs> and actually the guy wrote Hikaru no Go. Well, wait. So. Oh, no, no, no. Uh he illustrated Hikaru no Go. He didn't write it. He illustrated it. Oh. It looks like. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah, so right. that was him, yeah. like, you know, taking somebody else's uh, script and then, like, illustrating it, right? He didn't, oh, like, oh, write yeah. that. Okay, but, yeah, that is interesting that... Okay, so we, it, it's the same art style, though. Um, it is, it is. And he, it seems he didn't even write uh, Bakuman. Apparently, I'm I'm sorry about that. Uh, he also just illustrating. I mean, he's a great artist. Like you can't deny. Well, yeah, that but I'm sure with Bakuman, like Bakuman's about manga creation, right? So Bakuman yeah. must he he must have had some creative input with that because, like, you know, that's his life is manga creation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is uh, very interesting. Like I hope I I wish I I knew this before the the podcast but well i don't know it's we're just looking it up on the spot um huh i wonder maybe there was something like in him that like loved games and that's why he like signed on to illustrate a go manga and then like death note is kind of also wait, wait. So, sort death of mind note, games no, that note also isn't written by Obata. It's written by Tsugumi Oba. Oh, it's the same team. Uh, yeah, because they're like uh, they're like um, um, kind of like putting them, themselves in Bakuman together. Um, Oba okay. and Obata. Okay. Um, well, no, it was a different guy that um, authored uh, Hikaru no Go, though. Looks like. 
Yeah, a totally different guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but okay. But, the, yeah. It was those two that did um, Bakuman and Death Note. Yes, those okay. two. Um, but as 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 we already said, uh, just the title of uh, illustrator and writer doesn't mean that they're not like working together. Yeah, sure. I'm obviously. I'm sure that they talk about it. You know, that it's not it's not like you know, uh, uh, Oba just gives. Uh, Crap! What's the other guy's name? <laughs> oh, it's not like and uh, Oba Obata and Obata. And Obata. Okay, it's yeah. not like Oba just gives Obata the scripts and is like, "Just draw this," you know. I'm sure that you know they must have meetings, and I'm sure that the manga benefited from that because it is a really well thought out series, right? It's full of like really, really uh, intricate twists and really intricate uh, mind games and manipulations that you know completely make sense and. You know, you don't have to strain your imagination too much. I feel like it would be kind of difficult for one person to come up with all of that, thinking about it. So it of probably, course. yeah, it did benefit from the collaboration of those two. Of course. Um, and as you said, like, there's no way that the guy who is drawing the manga doesn't have anything to say about and And they have to, he also has, like, to choose what he's gonna draw so yeah uh, it's not like it's not like he's desperately applying for any manga to draw no he like he has probably like uh, a lot of like proposed like proposition like a lot of people are please draw this please draw this and he's like no i want mind games i want like this kind of like so it's interesting that he drew these three series which are all kind of like very mindy uh okay not what, a lot of... what is bakuman like i've never read it have you read it I have watched. I have watched some of it. I haven't. I. I think I. Even okay. Read I mean, I don't want to make I, the episode about this, but I'd like, just very briefly, like when you say like the, it's kind of mind gamey, like how how do you mean? Um, it's not mind gamey in any way. Bakuman is actually very meta. It's meta. about. Yeah, it's uh, but it's well, well in a way. If you say meta, it's still like something in your brain. It's still like you have to think about it. Okay. Because the whole story of of Bakuman is uh, two young, like enthusiastic characters. One is a writer, and one is a, <laughs> drawing it. I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, I'm trying sure to it's make not. It in the, in the, <laughs> They're in like the, author the, avatars or whatever. Yeah, I don't, and they're trying to make it in the manga business. And it's about, for example, at the beginning, they give in this, like, I, I, I like it because it's a manga about making manga because uh, in the very first episodes, they come up with this, this, like, very generic, boring kind of thing. And they give it to the publisher and they're like, no, no, this is, like, shit. Like, we don't, we don't want this. And then it's, like, about them, like, trying to figure out okay what what can be interesting what can we write about what can we draw and then they kind of like uh, come up with another story and it's still like okay it's a little bit better but not good enough then they start arguing and there's a lot of drama as well there's like uh, between them like blaming each other like it's you like mm. uh, writing shit. no it's you like drawing like shit no it's you it's you um Mm. Then there's like, of course, some romance. A girl gets in, and then they're like, I think they're like fighting about one girl and stuff like that. But it's very cool to see uh, Bakuman, a manga which uh, is about making manga because it's very honest about it. It's very like uh, cold. It's not like, it's not saying something like, oh, just uh, draw and just go and you are you are a star. No, it's like, no, it's like real hard work. Like you have to, uh, and even 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 when they get their like first manga like published, uh, and after a few weeks, like their numbers are going down, and they're like getting like yelled at, like your numbers are going down. Make it more interesting. Like how do we make it more? Yeah, interesting? how you yeah. you can't just make something more interesting. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's but, probably but, what but it's, it's like, like, honestly. Yeah, but it, uh, but but I like Bakuman. I didn't finish it, uh, but because it was too meta, it was too meta for me because I felt so bad about the people who are drawing. Mm, yeah, it's kind of too real. 
kind of just like yeah. makes you feel guilty for even reading manga in yeah, some sense. But, but it's, it's very brutal like it's all about like like they enter the like they enter the office of the manager and it's just like like your numbers are two percent down fuck you and he just yells at them yeah <laughs> they're, like, they're like what 2%. did we do wrong and yeah like, I don't, I, and, and they're like he's like i don't give a shit what you did wrong it's just down get it matter or you're fired and they're like oh, what do we do <laughs> right i mean yeah it's not like you can be more creative you know or anything like that but um i have to imagine that's kind of what it was like during the like latter half of death note um, a lot of uh, a lot of the times, like behind the scenes, and that's kind of where that's coming it, from. Do you Maybe. think so? The latter half, do you mean like the death of L, like yeah. when he died? I mean, everybody's probably seen it, so there's no sense in like holding on to spoilers. But... <laughs> no, no, no spoil. Yeah, so I should have said spoiler, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Spoiler uh, alert from now on. I mean, is that, uh, not is that, that the, the letter, not, anyone's like not the, seen the, this? The but... letter, yeah, like the latter half. Do you, so you mean basically? Uh, when uh, Raito is already like, uh, uh yeah, so, yeah, well, I'm talking about like, America. yeah, once okay. uh, once L dies, I would say is the beginning of the latter half of Death Note, um, in my opinion, because that's I would say like, and most people that I've talked to have agreed that the latter half, meaning after that event, uh, is where the series kind of gets stale and kind of like, um, doesn't have the same like drive. And like near isn't nearly as uh, <laughs> nearly he isn't nearly as a as an as interesting of a what would you call him an antagonist? No, I, I mean light is kind of the antagonist, even though he's the main character. I don't know, uh, but he's not as good of a opposing force as L was. Um, most people that I've talked to like kind of agree that like um, it just kind of loses its. Uh, loses the like charm that like it had in the the first half and you know and, I, you know and and, and i i thought I, I i thought about that and uh honestly i think the problem is uh as i told you before when i was a teenager i also would agree a hundred percent with you uh the 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 part until l dies is the best because the best part is the uh, raito versus l their mind games that's so amazing but now that I'm older and I rewatched a little bit of it, and when I think back about it, because it's uh, very fresh, somehow it's still in my memory. All the all of the uh, plot. Um, I actually think Raito is getting older, and the story is getting more serious at the same time. Um, I guess it does have more to do with like politics and like. Um... You know, like the special American police force and all this stuff. So it is, it does get more mature rather than just being a detective, like a genius detective versus a genius, like, uh, what would you call light? I don't know, high schooler with a with a magical book. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, what I try to say is that. Um... I actually appreciate, especially a character which most people very much, uh, it's, it's, uh, he's like uh, not as much appreciated. It's like Mikami. Mik oh yeah, sure. And, 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 and people are like, oh, he's so boring. He's just like a slave to Kiria. But at the same time, he's like also very interesting. And he's like the uh, obsessed fanboy. Yeah, and after some time, I actually appreciate, and people are gonna don't don't I'm uh, don't unsubscribe, unsubscribe don't <laughs> hate me for this, but I actually like near more than L. After really? No. All. Oh, okay. yes. Hmm. What What about him? Do you like more? I well, he is he does have quirks. I don't know. I just love L's all his little quirks and all his little mannerisms. The way he, you know he's constantly like sitting in his chair, all weird. And he he says that that increases his brain power by like what, like twenty percent or fifty percent, just the way he sits. Um, and he's just such a quirky, interesting character. And Nier just seems to me to be kind of like more 
um, just stoic and childish and um, just all business. And like, there's not really much fun about him. From what and I remember. Yes. And that's, and, and that's exactly like why I liked L more when I was younger and why I like Nier more right now. Because if you really are this genius thinking about everything, like thinking everything through all the time, are you really going to be like this goofy, like, <laughs> like L, like, uh, I have to sit like this. I have to eat sweets all the time. Uh, I'm gonna join your high school to study you. I'm gonna have like this weird expression. I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch your girlfriend's butt. <laughs> like, 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 do you, like. I feel like okay. it's more entertaining. It <laughs> uh, is, it as is. far as a manga goes, um, it is definitely more entertaining. But what I was trying to say is that uh, near near at the end, I'm I'm gonna call them by the Japanese name. Sorry. I'm gonna call him. Okay, Nia. I'll go with uh, English names. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. It's just more natural to me. So Nia is for me uh, more like this very grounded, realistic kind of thinking mind. That's like what an actual super genius would be like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not very entertaining. A little bit boring, I admit. But at the same time, that's how he would probably be. Uh, okay. Mellow, Mellow is, I think, the most hated character in the Stroud series. Oh, is he? Uh, uh, well, I mean, I kind of like him because he's, you know, this like force of chaos, right? He's this force of chaos that's just unpredictable, and um, it's it, he's also kind of necessary because Nier is the exact exact opposite. Nier is just like this cold, calculating like individual who just you know sits around and plays with his toys and thinks up the next move whereas Mel is the one who actually does it and like sometimes like in life you do need to just go and do things you ca you can't just sit around just pondering like every single uh possible outcome you can't just be thinking oh well if they say this then I'll say this but what if they say this well I'll, I'll have to think about uh, you know a b c d and e and all the branches all the conversation branches that might lead off of that no like, a lot of times it's better to just go and do it. And just, like, you know, let your instincts take control. And that's something about Mello that I do appreciate, is the fact that, you know, he doesn't wait around to come up with the master plan. He just kind of, like, goes and he does what he thinks needs to be done, you know, because he feels this sense of urgency about it. Which I yeah. think is... Well, I, well, I think, well, Important. I agree that Mello, Mello is actually very interesting as a character himself, but I personally have just like a little bit of, uh, not really hatred, but like a little bit because of his haircut. His haircut, <laughs> of all things? I, I just, I, I somehow his hair just, I, I don't like his hair. That's all, but, but as a character, he's definitely interesting. <laughs> I mean, oh my okay. god! I'm sounding I'm so stupid right now. Uh, Is I there like anything it. else? Is there anything else about his character that rubs no, the wrong way? No, it's, it's just it's, the hair. His character design. Just, right. just the hair. All right. Otherwise. Well, why do you think other people don't like him then? Um, I think because he's not like uh, like like uh, Kira. Edu or um, yeah, he's Nia. not calculating. He, like he kind of feels out of place in the series, in some sense. Yes, because... he's like very, very impulsive and very um, uh, driven, like by his emotions. Uh, otherwise, uh, not, not like by, by logic. Yeah, and doesn't he like uh, mess up a plan at some point? Doesn't he like uh, I... like run in all guns a blazing and freaking like ruin everything that Nier was setting up at at one point? I think I remember something like that. Yeah, yeah, he does something like that. Um, and as you said, he feels very out of place uh, in the series um, because you you kind of like you you start watching the series because of somebody like Raito and Edu. You like you like how they how they're like calm, thinking, and trying to outsmart their opponents. And then. Metal just appears and he's just like this crazy, the, like he's just like a wild card. You don't know what he's gonna do. And, yeah, it's uh, kind of almost like a thug in some sense. He's actually a real criminal, criminal in the series. Yeah, he, yeah. He takes well, I mean, over, that, yeah, like, that's exactly what he is. 
And I would say that's why some people, but honestly, I haven't talked to, to, to too many people about uh, Meadow, so I might be wrong. But for me, I, I felt like he was out of place, as you said. I didn't like his hair. <laughs> uh, but he's definitely important, and uh, he has his place uh, definitely in the series. And even at the end, Mia I mean, says... Uh, yeah, without, he was instrumental without... to the, the plot. Without a person like him in the works, like the uh, the final um, you know, chase of Kira like, actually, wouldn't work. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, uh, without his, like, chaotic brain, like, without his, like, uh, unpredict... Oh, that's... Yeah. Oh. Oh, you didn't... Oh. Uh, I think they state that in the series. I think Nier says that at one point, that, like, he and Meadow are, uh, like, two... Uh, necessary forces in the task force, and the reason that L failed was because he was on his own. But Nier had Mello to work with, and Mello was like kind of this thing, this predictable force of chaos. Not that he like he's not unpredictable. Like you know, like uh, like Nier, a person of Nier's intelligence can predict what Mello is going to do, and that predictable chaos was what enabled him to use him in his plan to capture Kira. You know, and that kind of predictable chaos is something that was necessary um, for his plan to I work. Actually, I, I, I actually disagree because I think that uh, Melo or Mero did something which nobody expected. And I think he, he was like uh, throwing a wrench into the gears. He, he, I think he did at one point, but it, what I'm saying is that like, in the end, like he, like Nier was able to set up a situation or something had to uh like make the situation such that he would be able to predict what Mello would do and then he used that in order to um you know put more pieces on the board and like encircle Kira and trap him in that warehouse. Uh I wish I remembered more clearly but yeah I I also wish that I actually rewatched it before this episode because it's kind of very spontaneous right now. Uh but the way I get it is that if it was just a simple mind game between Raito and Nia or Raito and Eru, um, it it would just drag on forever. But having like this like unpredictable crazy guy who who's just doing stuff like which you don't expect is what uh, fucked up like the plans of 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 uh, Raito. Mm, yeah, and, that's another point too. Is is that like you know. Light wasn't expecting this crazy guy to just come in all guns a blazing, and that kind of like put him on edge, right? And that kind of made him like, yeah. oh, I can't, I don't know what to expect anymore. I'd like that. Who would do this, you know? And, and it be, made him like, you know, start preparing for every single situation. It's kind of like Mellow forced Light to, uh, to come up with, to like overthink things and like kind of almost go crazy, like tr trying to like, take care of every little possibility, when in reality, all it was is just he was doing something unpredictable one time, and, you know, it kind of worked out um, in the uh, task force's favor in the end. Um, Didn't he, like, uh, kidnapped, like, his sister? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, and held, him, held her for ransom. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's not something that uh, Ed Ed would do. Or, Definitely not. That no, that's do. very yeah, uh, that's very thug like. That's very you know, just uh, you know, because that's the mindset that he has. Um, and uh, you know, and it's not something a like professional uh, organization like seeking criminals would do because that's criminal behavior in and of itself. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry for saying that. Uh, like he's then very underappreciated because okay see now now yeah i I, I understand why people don't like him but i can totally understand why he was necessary you know i see why they put him in the story and uh the thematic naming of l m and n is very deliberate you know l mellow and near you know they're the next two in line and they have to work together in order to surpass the l you know, <laughs> so like yeah, you can't yeah. have one without the other. They like complement each other, like order and chaos. You know, um, together. Yeah, of course. And uh, even at the end, um, 
Okay, I, I I think we should get back to the yeah. to the uh, beginning. Uh, of right, the story. we kind of we started at the end for some reason, but yeah, yeah we <laughs> guys, this is very spontaneous. It's very. Uh, I, this I, is completely unplanned. We're just going with the flow of the conversation. But I mean, that's I what we'll enjoy it. Yeah, that just works. Um, usually. <laughs> Let's, let's go. Let's 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 go to the beginning, and maybe we will. Because already I'm figuring figuring more things out. Because uh, I was really not appreciating this character until now, but now that I'm thinking about it, talking to you, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, you need him. He's he's actually kind of cool. Uh, but okay, let's go back to that. Like, very to the beginning. Sure. What do we have? We have what, okay, what so we have? We, we, have... we begin with uh. Well, how do we begin? We begin in the Shinigami realm, right? And, you know, there's just a bunch of Shinigami that are sitting around playing bones, like just tossing bones around and, like, gambling on them or something. Um, and eventually, like, Duke, the, like, uh, you know, the famous, like, Shinigami that follows Light around, he de he decides to, uh, he gets bored and he's like, I'm just gonna freaking drop this magical book I have that can kill anybody and I'm gonna drop it randomly somewhere in the, in the human world doesn't doesn't matter where uh and eventually a uh, young high school student named uh, Yagami Light uh comes and picks up uh picks up the note and uh i mean <laughs> you know I, I i don't see any point in summarizing the entire thing how about we just talk about like okay so let's say that you found a book on the ground just randomly that said oh. death note on it and you hadn't read oh. death note before like what would you think would you pick it up first of well, all i would i would i would pick up the book um right and you might like look at it and be like okay this is some kind of prank right this is yeah i would think this is like some fan ma merchandise from a show which is called death note probably well sure but i'm saying like if if death note did not exist in our world and like if a random death note just fell out of the sky um i i have honestly, to honestly 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 i would just probably just completely ignore it because in my mind there's there wouldn't be any possibility that it's going to work. So I would probably either just throw it away in the trash. Honestly. Right. But, um, and I feel like a lot of people would do that as well. Um, I think uh, eventually somebody is going to pick it up and find it and use it, though. Somebody with enough curiosity. Somebody who, like, almost wants it to work. You know? Like, even if they are really doubting that it actually does work, like, maybe there's somebody eventually... It's like, well, I mean, if it is, does work, it would be very interesting. Um, or something. I don't know. At some point along the line. <laughs> uh, so let's say that you get to that point. Let's say that you get to that point where you're like, all right, so I have this. Uh, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it and see what works. What would, yeah. what, what would, what would, uh, well, let's say. Well, obviously, if you saw Duke, <laughs> like if you picked up the book and bam, there was a Shinigami in front of you, you would believe it, right? But yeah. let's say if before that, like uh, you decided, okay, I'm just going to test it out and see what see what happens. What would you do then? Um, yeah, and that's kind of a difficult question to answer because it's like yeah, you don't yeah, even want to think about it, right? You don't even want to yeah, think but, about what you would do. That's why it's such a monumental show, and that's why it's um, liked all over the world. Because what it's basically like the Death Note. If it works, it's the best weapon ever. Basically, you have more right. power in the world. You can kill anybody, anybody you want at any time. It's like the you. Yeah, the and oh, and did you uh, uh, <laughs> did you read that uh, that new Death Note one off or? Not one off. Uh, one shot that came out like I think two years ago or something by the original authors. Is it the one killing uh, about killing old people because they're no. mooching off the Texas? No, that was uh, that. Yeah, that one. That one came out uh, s maybe less than a decade after the original series had ended. But no, I'm talking about the the new one that was just published in Shonen Jump. Maybe I think it might have been last year actually. Um, in that one, uh, cause we were just talking about how it's useful as a super weapon in that, uh, one-off, uh, the, the person who gets the death note decides to sell it. <laughs> he, 
his first thought is, I'm going to sell this. And oh, he, okay, that, that's that's not a thought which would have ever come to me, honestly. Right, and uh, but it's it's I I have to assume it just came from a uh, a place of like, well, we've had you know we've had them use it you know to cleanse the world of criminals. We've had them you know use it to end old people's suffering. Uh, what what else can we do with a death note? How about he sells it? You know, how we, let's go there, you know, or something like that, because you know there's only so much you can do with it. But yeah, eventually, uh, in that uh, one-off, actually, uh, <laughs> I should probably, because this might be something that uh, people haven't read. So I should say, like, you know, if you haven't read it, go read it. It's really short. It's on like shonenjump.com. You can just go like read it for free. I think. I think that's how I read it. Um, it's literally just available, or maybe it's on Viz or something like that. But yeah, he does uh, like put it up for auction, and like I think. Like, every freaking superpower in the entire world starts bidding on it for, like, millions and billions of dollars. I think, like, eventually, like, Donald Trump appears, and he, like, uh, uh, he, like, uh, eventually, like, gives him, like, three trillion dollars for the, for the book because it's so valuable. And not only is it so valuable, but it would be so, um so devastating for one of their enemies to have that they don't want them to have it. You know, um, well, it's definitely an interesting concept to, to 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 see who wants it the most. But at the same time, if I was the guy selling it, I mean, the first thought I would that would cross my mind is like they're just gonna kill me, and <laughs> like, and that is what I, happens. That is what happens at the end. Uh, he, oh, he, okay. yeah. Uh, what he does is it's just so much money that he's like, all right, so I'm not gonna take it all for myself. I'm going to spread it to everybody in Japan. I'm going to give a little bit, maybe like, you know, a hundred million dollars to everybody in Japan, right? Um, and then, uh, like, they have some caveat, like, uh, I think, like, the American military, like, writes some, like, uh, clause after writing, uh, the, the guy's name, like, if the person who picks up the money has, uh, a cert has, like, uh, has touched the death note before they will die or something like that. So he goes to the bank, he withdraws the money, and as soon as his hand touches the uh, the bills, he collapses dead from a heart attack. Um, that, at, le at least I would have been smart enough to think about that. When, if I, right, if he I wasn't the smartest life. Kira. He definitely wasn't the smartest Kira, but at least it's new. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it as you said uh, after after the concept of killing criminals and the concept of killing all people, uh, it's it's kind of and people are kind of like uh, hungry for it in in some way. So I guess yeah, that's that's a good idea. I just I I don't know. I just don't see myself really getting pulled into it because at the end of the day, I'm. Uh, I can't imagine myself selling it. I'm still thinking about what I would do with it if I saw the Shinigami and if I actually knew that it was real. Because right. it's a very hard question. It is. It's, it's like, it's like you don't... It's almost like you don't want to do anything with it. You have to be some kind of, like, person... Like, a very narcissistic person to even want to do anything with it in the first place, right? Um, I would be afraid, uh, like, maybe, like, when I'm thinking about maybe I would try it out, maybe on some somebody who is like a mass murderer in, in some uh, prison cell awaiting the death sentence anyway. I might, I might just try it out just to see if it works. Yeah. But after that, after that, is, that yeah, it's like, what else are you going to do with it? <laughs> you know, um, I, I so in well, some well, sense, well, you can well, say well, that. Light is already kind of like um, a little abnormal from the very beginning because, you know, um, after he sees that it works, he doesn't just drop it, you know, he um, he continues to like use it and like he kind of lets it go to his head and he gets this God complex, which is very, uh, you know, abnormal for anybody, you know, so it's kind of, you know, um, it's kind I, of I interesting think problem, to think about. I, I, think, I think the problem with, with... Yeah, it's very interesting to think and talk about. I think the problem with Raito is that uh, he's so young that mm. he has this... Um, 
this kind of like confidence that he thinks that he knows how the world should work and that he ha he should be the one who should like i'm gonna fix the whole world like it it's something yeah like him. he doesn't trust that the adults know what they're doing and he has this kind of like naive yeah. mindset of like well you know they're all full of crap you know like they don't know what they're doing i know better even though i've only been on this planet for 18 years or however long you know so it's like uh, do, well, uh what 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 do you, i said like okay, uh, like let me finish okay go ahead first i said uh first of all first reaction would be i would just throw it away okay yeah. ignore that let's say let's say that i take it seriously because i see ryuk then i said maybe i would try it out just to see if it works on somebody who's gonna die anyway and after that honestly i hope I hope that I would just burn it and just like right. say this thing doesn't belong here. Fuck this shit. Um, I hope, but I'm not sure because you you can't know what. Like if you have the most powerful weapon in your hands, you really can't tell. Uh, yeah. What you're actually but what do you think you would do if you were the, that student at that day and that notebook fell down and you found it? What would you do? Yeah. Uh, probably something similar, honestly. Uh. Yeah, uh, I would, I don't know, I always kind of like to, uh, imagine, like, I'm always kind of looking out for supernatural stuff, uh, you know, I've always kind of been like that, I always kind of, like, don't doubt that there might be some supernatural force in the world, so I probably wouldn't doubt immediately that it was, like, uh, some supernatural objects of some kind. Mm, okay. Um... So I probably wouldn't do that, but I would look at it and I would be like, uh, I w you know, I might ask somebody about it. <laughs> I might, uh, yeah, I think I would probably go to like one of my coworkers or like one of my friends and I would be like, look at this. L what do you see what it says here? This has got to be some kind of prank or something, right? You don't think this is real, do you? You know, I, um, I feel like that would be my first step. I would I would share it with somebody. Um and then, you know, ask them what they think I should do. And uh you know, cuz it is just something so abnormal and, you know, at the very least, even if it is a prank, it would be like a good conversation topic. Like who left this here? You know, what do they who do they think we are? You think they think we're really going to believe this or something like that? Like I would probably um yeah, I would probably do that first. Uh, I, can, I can see that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think I would ever write anybody's name down. Not I, even just, like, try it out with, with, with some somebody who was, like, literally in two hours of yeah, death row. Yeah, I would probably give it away before I did that. I would probably give it away to somebody and... Or somebody that I trusted. Somebody that I figured would, you know, like... I don't know, like they could get rid of it or they could burn it or something like that. I wouldn't want the okay, like but, responsibility. But, 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 but if you if you saw the Shinigami in the meantime, right? right. If I saw if I saw Yuk standing there, I would probably freaking have a heart attack and die anyway without even having my name written down. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if I survived that. Uh, what would I do from there? I don't know. I would freaking ask him oh, questions. Oh, I'd be like, say, "Where are you from? Yeah. Like, wh why are you here?" Let's say, let's say for example, that uh, you see Ryuk and he has his own death note, and he kills somebody randomly in front of you just to prove to you that it's actually real. I would freaking probably and, drop uh, the note on the ground and run away screaming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I I can't imagine any situation because like, what would I need to do it for? Like, uh, like I don't have any enemies really. Uh, like I I'm pretty easygoing. Like I can pretty I can handle uh any situation. Like if somebody's bullying me, I can usually you know you know stand up for myself. Uh, I don't know. I don't have anybody that. Uh, well, you, 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 what I can't. Even, I can't even imagine like a reason why I would have to like, um, to even use it. 
Yeah, because basically you don't have like these grand concepts like uh, Raito that you have. Exactly, like... yeah. I don't have this like feeling that like I can use this for good or anything like that. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> it would be scary to even like... Yeah, the fact that Light, you know, sees Juk and still is like, okay, this is something I can use for good. Like, look at that guy. Look at the look at the way that he is. The freaking like skeletal bone monster with freaking like spiky hair and freaking like uh I don't know, like just seeing him would make me feel like, you know, this was some like act of uh, you know, the devil, you know, that was like coming to test me or something and I would just freaking drop it and run. Um, but he doesn't. He freaking is like, okay, well, I'm gonna listen to what this uh, skeletal bone freak has to say, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> it just takes it from there. So, yeah. Actually, this is more this is more interesting than I uh, thought at the at the beginning because right now I'm thinking, if I realize that it's real, like I just tried it on, on some criminal who is gonna die anyway. I just tried it and it's real. Okay, it works. And I definitely wouldn't use it like a Raito. I wouldn't try to get rid of the criminals in the world or something like that. Or, But I'm afraid of one part of myself that I would have this like thought of using it for my own gain. For example, having life insurance on somebody. Mm, okay, yeah. I've getting getting like i'm sure yeah there's growth. and there's people out there you know that would like want to do that you know that would yeah i mean there's people out there that don't have a death note and think of that <coughs> um i mean I'm, it's pulling it's pulling out this side of me which i'm actually afraid of that i right. that, that i might do something like that that i would because i'm Sorry to say, but I mean, I have some financial problems. But yeah, if I'm really thinking about it, and if I'm honest on this podcast, um, I I don't know if I had a death note and I knew it worked, that I wouldn't just convince somebody to like my somebody like some someone from my family or one of my friends to get life insurance on my name. Nah. and I just wouldn't just use it just to get money I, I I'm, I'm so afraid of that part of me right and I I am I, honestly I'm very honest on this podcast I don't know if I would do that shit I don't know I, I I'm not I'm so sure I'm not... like you're not the like there's other people in the world who would think of doing something like that yeah and there's a difference between thinking about doing something like that and like you know actually doing it like i have to imagine like you know even if you thought about doing something like that you know you would like talk to the family member or the the person that you were going to do that with and you would see them like also all full of life and stuff and you would be like no i can't do this and then you would like burn the death note or something like that um i i hope i, I hope i hope i i honestly all hope i'm i'm like that um right um uh, but 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 i'm not as I said, I'm just honest and uh, talking to you, discussing uh, like these things actually never came to my mind as I as I watched it. It's it's so hard because it's at the same time, like I look at my bank account, I, I look at my wallet, I look like like how I'm how how am I gonna pay the next yeah. bills? How am how am I? And I'm so desperate for money. And then I see, for example, let's say an older person who is going to die soon anyway like a very old person and then i'm like 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 maybe maybe this little demon inside me would say like something like well he's gonna die anyway and you will make money and you can do something in life with that money uh so why not just use the death note and mm -hmm. yeah I'm, um... I'm, 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 I'm so I'm, I'm so broken right now i i don't even know i i don't know what i would do honestly mm. Ah, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 just like I mean, a thought, I, you know. I, like I, I'm not saying I'm not saying I would do it. I'm, I'm saying of I, course. I'm, I'm yeah, I get that. Um, I, I I mean I mean I mean I I ninety nine percent I'm sure that I wouldn't do something like that. I would probably also just like burn it and just like 
destroy it and say like fuck this this doesn't belong in this world but there's this like little little something in 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 like behind my like at the at the at the end of my brain there's something like you actually if you had that kind of power you actually might you actually might do that kind of thing and i'm a, i'm i'm scared of that right and i mean most people are capable of uh like if you push them far enough they're capable of like breaking morality uh, like when you really get down to it cuz like you know uh i won't use real world examples but uh just suffice it enough to say uh suffice it enough to say like you know if you push anybody far enough then they can break uh certain morals i would just say that like um, just dropping a book in front of somebody and being like, now you have the power to do this wouldn't be enough to push somebody to do something, uh, immoral on that, uh, or something like that, you know? But, but I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking like, it's easy to say right now because it's, it's, it's easy to say right now because we obviously won't have a death note it's it's obviously not gonna happen mm -hmm. and the easiest thing to say is like i'm not gonna use it I'm, I'm i'm just gonna burn it but i have to admit that i'm flawed and and i just so and, there's just no real reason in uh discussing it any further at this point because like i feel like we're just kind of like talking uh yeah like what if it happened like you don't know what's gonna happen but like, there's no point in discussing it, right? Because, like, it won't happen. Um, so, I I feel, I feel like we should probably change... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, because we've pretty much reached the conclusion. Like, maybe there is, like, a part of us that would, like, you know, want to use it for selfish reasons or something like that. But uh, probably not, and it would never come to that. So... You know, but I guess it is interesting to think about in the sense of like, like, am I as, or are we as like virtuous as we think we are? Like, if the freaking devil whispered in your ear, like saying, like, just do this, you know, uh, I don't know. I, it just kind of makes me uncomfortable to even talk about it, really. Uncomfortable, but that's why it's interesting, and I need to come to a conclusion about this. Um, so I want, to, for a little longer, I want to think about it. Um, I'm sorry, Sonic, um, but if I had a death knot, I, I, it, you, you know, um, you know, the problem is, the problem is. We can easily say it's ne never going to happen in our life anyway, so who cares? But it's uh, basically the the whole point of the series, like it, I guess to make have, you question you, your morality and stuff like that. Like if you if you have the biggest weapon in the world and the biggest power in, of the world in your hands, what would you actually do? Okay, so why don't we relate it to uh, like, let's say that I am. I am, what What could it be? Like, let's say that I have, like, a nuclear weapon that I, uh, <laughs> no, that wouldn't work. I don't know. Not, I, I just don't it's see. Not, it's, not, it's not even close because yeah, nuclear it's weapons, not. first of all, they're going to be, they're going to be detected. People are going to be alarmed. They will know where it came off. Yeah, and then it, um, there's, like, possibility yeah, of return fire. Um, and it's like the perfect weapon just to make people like disappear and die without a anybody knowing how it happened or what happened. Um, I n I need to get to some conclusion about this. I need to get some conclusion about myself tonight <laughs> because because I, I I want to I want to figure it out. What what I really what I really you can't know to. though. You can't possibly know until you you are there. You know, um, and I mean, it, so it doesn't really matter. It, it's, uh, I don't know. And like, I can't, I can't say like whether any of us in that kind of situation might use it for selfish motives or something like that. But, um, 
<sighs> I'm 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 sorry for like making you um kind of like uh in a bad mood. Uh, but honestly, right now after we talk for like fifty minutes or one hour about that note, I really need to know. I need to figure it out. Okay, what do you think? What do you think you would do? Search your soul. I th I believe that you would uh you would see your family member or whatever thing you were thinking of doing. You would see the person that you wanted to kill and you would uh see their humanity and you would look at them and you would be like, you know, can I really do this? You know, your hand might be hovering over the paper with the pen in the hand being like I'm about to write this person's name down and your hand would be quivering and you'd be like I can't do it. You might break down into tears. You might freaking like close the book and you would be like I can't like you would just picture their face something like that surely uh, yeah but then again I could I could get like um drunk at some night and just say like fuck everybody <laughs> fuck the world and I would like take the death note and I would just be like fuck and I feel and like just... after you did that uh, let's okay so let's say that you did it let's say that you found a found somebody to like you know, give you their inheritance or whatever, you would do that, and then you would feel so bad about it that you would probably kill yourself. Because yeah, I don't. That, 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 that's also true. That, yeah, that's probably right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I didn't want to go any further down this because that, like, that's the freaking end end line. Because you can't do something like that. Like, even if you do something out of uh, out of like wanting to. Uh, uh, or out of a momentary impulse or something like that, like, eventually you're going to regret it. Desperately, you know? And you're going to freaking, uh, you know, wish you hadn't done it, and, like, you know, you're going to miss that person, and, like, there's no amount of, like, greed that can overcome human sympathy for most people. May maybe not for, uh, you know, s certain people with, like, uh, uh, what would you call it? Like lack of human empathy. Uh, but As psychopaths. Psychopaths, exactly. Um, but I, I would say for most, uh, normal people, and and I can, I've, I can tell. I've talked with you enough to know that, like, if you ever were in that situation. You would either not do it, or you would do it and then immediately regret it so much that it would freaking ruin your life. One of those two things. Like, you're not the type of person that would just do it and then be like, hoo, 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 I did it. Now I have the money, you know, or something like that. No, you wouldn't do that. I, I know. I can tell. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Thank, th thank you for um, reassuring me. Yeah. Um, it, it it was it's just such a such a huge like question that that it really makes you doubt yourself. Sorry for uh, rambling so much about it, but it's really such a big morality question. Uh, and now we can move on. And now we can get back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You you're right. You're right. And thank you for uh, just telling me that I'm the type of person who. Thank you for that. Let's get yeah. back to Yagami Raito <laughs> and why he yeah. does it. <laughs> sorry for sorry for the rambling. Right. Uh okay, so rissen has been talking a lot. Um <laughs> Yeah, let's let's check what he what he wrote. Um uh, Yeah, I guess like the death note is like just like a perfect like it's it's almost like hiring an assassin in some sense, but you don't have to do that and it's foolproof it's like even better than that i don't know the better is a is a hard word to use for it but unless, unless you're so um cocksure like um yagami raito that you think that you can uh that you can decide how the world should work um you will probably not use it in that way i'm just curious i don't remember exactly how uh misa uh oh, oh yeah how she used the death note once once she got it uh i think she just used it for light right she just freaking you know let light use her 
Also, uh, so so she was like us. She didn't have any like big plans of killing a lot of people. Right. Um, she was just like a normal person. That's uh, why uh, I'm really really curious how Misa used the Death Note. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, what did she do first? Oh, she she like copied him. She copied him at first. She like did some like you know she killed some criminals with the death note and then she like sent like a tape into like the media saying like i i am kira like and uh or or rather or maybe she like uh said like she sent like a secret message through it that only the real kira would understand like saying meet me here uh like i want to talk to you or something like that oh, I, was that yeah, that part I I remember something like that, like some secret message to like the media. Yeah, that they met um, through some messages, but I think that. Um... Oh wait, no, it was that. Yeah, no, no, no. It was that she, um, she like used her life force to gain the Shinigami eyes, right? And then she looked for light, and she uh, found him by like reading his name above his head, and then uh, kind of like uh, convinced him to see her. Like convinced him to let her come over to his house, or something like that, and then they started working together. She wasn't she wasn't driven like uh, Raito, but by some? She ideology. was driven out of. Oh no no no! She was driven because um Kira uh killed somebody that had abused her in the past, killed somebody that um had like s severely traumatized her. Uh, I I still like legitimately. I I really never have really liked her. Um, I think she's way too. She's too much of a fangirl. She's too. Um, she doesn't really have her own personality besides just being like this obsessed fangirl. Um. So it, and I don't know. I guess I guess in the sense of the story, it uh like adds. A little, uh, it gives light an ally, and I think that's why she was necessary. Um, is, so I guess, uh, all right. So you didn't like Mello, and uh, I didn't really, I don't really like Misa, but I think they both serve a function in the story, narratively speaking, um, which is to yeah. add like well, an extra party member, <laughs> if you want to say that. Um, they definitely do, but as I said, I, I think that uh, Misa was necessary to show how somebody else would use the Death Note. She was never hmm. really caring about about uh, justice or fixing the world. She was just like, oh, there's this very smart guy. Uh, he's so cool. I want to be with him. I need a relationship. I'm I'm lonely. And she used the Death Note for that, and she used it. She even killed people for that, but she just wanted to be with the guy. Um, yeah. While, while Raito was obviously just using it to 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 impose that he just had a god complex. Yeah, he, he thought he could fix the world by putting people in constant fear. Yeah, but 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 that's but I mean it's a cool thing that happens in the story because uh, you see how somebody else would use it. I don't think Misa would ever like if 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 she was the first one who found the death note, a death note. I don't think she would ever use it in a way like Raito. I think she would be confused like us at the beginning of this podcast. Like she just wouldn't know what to do with it. Um, yeah, um, but, exactly. And uh, yeah, I do think it's uh, it. It is kind of interesting to see how a different person would use it, but at the same time, like, I don't think even, like, how somebody would use it is necessarily, like, the driving force of the series. I feel like it's more, like, the intense psychological ba battles. It's kind of like almost a like cop and mouse, or is that the right term? Cop and robber? Cat, cat and mouse, that was what I was looking for. Cat and mouse type of situation where, you know, L is trying to hunt Light down and Light has his motivations for wanting to evade him and it's just like this constant psychological warfare um i think that's what the series is really about and like the death note is just like a interesting concept to not only pull you in but to keep the narrative flowing in a very unique way um i think that's what the like p real pull of the series is 
Um, yeah, because because like yeah. before we were talking today, we didn't even really think about like what we would do with a Death Note, right? Like before, yeah. Before yeah, today, we weren't cool. even thinking about that. So it's not something that's on your mind while you're watching the series. What's on your mind is like, how's L gonna, or rather, how's Light gonna get out of this? You know, how's like, you know, is L gonna do do some crazy mind game shenanigans or something yeah, like that? Yeah, definitely. Like, like we 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 today because because uh, I don't want to sound uh, somehow like. Um, like cocky but nowadays we're like adults we have worked we have our, our lives and uh, mm. um, it's totally different when you watch the show when you are young it's so different uh, as i told you before when i watched that note as as a teenager i was rooting for raito all the way like i was just like go 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 yeah yeah, yeah kill him yeah uh, and when i a little bit like rewatched it and reread it recently. I was like, "This kid is fucking so stupid!" Like, just <laughs> yeah, he's so like, full of himself. Uh, he, yeah, and he doesn't really understand like how the world works because, like, you know, the criminals that he's going after are already like in prison. Um, I uh, did we talk about this before or before the podcast? Or I don't think we've talked about this yet in the podcast. Uh, it was like you know there was some like. A uh, statement early on where like light is fed up with uh with like the way that criminal justice is and the fact that like you know freaking uh child rapists you know sometimes like get paroled after like a few years when they've done something so horribly like inhumane and immoral you know and he feels like why are they getting out you know like why uh like why should they ever be allowed to run free they should just die like something who's done something so horrible as that should just die. You know, that's like Light's mindset, which, you know, is kind of understandable. Uh, and we did an entire podcast on this type of thing, the Kazi and Morality uh, yeah, episode. Yeah, we did. Um, so, you know, it doesn't ne necessarily need to be rehashed again in this episode. But uh, I would say that that is kind of uh, in a, or ignorant, in a sense, because, you know, it's not as if, like, every single person that's in jail uh, deserves to be there the rest of their life, you know? Uh, like, and there is hope for some people, you know, sometimes people regret what they've done and that they legitimately never will do it again. And sometimes there are innocent people who are accused of a crime and light doesn't even think about that. That I don't think there's even one line in the entire death note anime or manga or live action or anything that, you know, makes reference to, Oh, but they might be innocent. No, he doesn't think that because like, if they were accused of the crime, then they must've done it. That's all that he thinks, which, which is uh, another very short sighted thing. Oh, is his dream to become a lawyer? And <laughs> and, and 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 okay. He and he is short sighted because at the end of the day, he's a kid. Um. Yeah, and I mean, if, I do have to imagine, like, if he, uh, you know, decided to go through college, he probably would take up some criminal justice of some kind. That does totally make sense with his character because he is very like driven like that. But I have to assume, like, if he did get into criminal justice, he would understand the things that I am now, or that we are now talking about, you know? The, yeah, the, the, the problem with Raito, which I understand nowadays, and which I didn't understand back then, is that he doesn't understand that people have been trying to figure this thing out for like, thousands of years. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not you. Yeah, like... Like, people are trying to figure out what to do with people who do terrible things all the time. It's right. a very difficult question. It's something you need to very, you need to sit down. You need to study it, talk with people about it. You need to really, like, put effort into it. But no, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, high, a high school student. I'm a kid. Yeah. I know what. what I've figured out more than the entire history of humanity has figured out in my... You know, up, like, even though I'm only in 11th grade, I know everything that there is to know. You know, that's that's how that's what he thinks, you know, and um, that is a way that people can get, 
you know, if, uh, you know, if they get overly egotistical and, you know, they, you know, people can think that they know everything, but, you know, that's why, uh, what he does is wrong. <laughs> that's, that's exactly why is because he, he's only thinking about his own morality, right? I think that's what it really boils down to. Like, you know, when people look at, uh, uh, Light's character, and they're like, is he really evil? I think the reason that uh, he is, like, well, you know, we're, we've had trouble with the word evil before, but uh, how about, uh, you know, like, a criminal? The reason that he would be classified as a criminal in uh, the logistics of the world is that he is acting out of his own personal beliefs, and he is not stopping to think about what anybody else in the world thinks about what he's doing, right? Uh, he just constantly, uh, you know, just uses the death note however he sees fit, doesn't stop to consider, oh, maybe they might be innocent, oh, maybe, you know, like, they might be uh, able to be reformed. I think he starts killing, like, criminal, like, petty burglars at some point, just just to keep up his repertoire. He starts, you know, ki killing, like, shoplifters who were caught on camera or something as petty as that. You know, it, at that point, like, it's... It's just so, it's just so, uh, just so single-minded and just, like, he's just acting out of, like, what he thinks he's right without consulting anybody else. And that's what's so wrong with it. And uh, not that it wouldn't be wrong in the first place, but, you know, that's what, it, what that's what, you know, makes it unquestionably wrong. I would say. Yeah, and... I think his, like, as I said, like, I think two times in the in the whole podcast that when I was a kid, I thought, like, he was cool. And when I watch it now, I think he's, like, a fucking piece of shit. Right. Um, it's because he has literally, like, a god complex. Yeah. He has this problem in his brain where he thinks he needs to, he's the one who can fix the world. When he doesn't realize that that not like you are not a fucking genius yeah. for thinking of killing every single single one who who committed right. any crime, yeah, there were civilizations like that. It 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 was like in in history there were civilizations where anything you would get killed for, even the most petty thing you would get just right. like killed for. But it didn't work. No. And that's why we are where where we are right now. Exactly, but yeah. I mean there there's a very clear like you know, you do have to punish people, but you can't just indiscriminately just, you know, give everybody the maximum possible punishment for anything. You know, it just doesn't work. It's too simple minded, you know, and um I think contrary to what Light believes about himself. I don't think that he's, like, a super genius that has seen, like, the, the best possible path for humanity. I think on the exact opposite, his mindset is rather primitive. His mindset is rather, like, you know, back, like, almost, like, uh, not quite Stone Age era, but, like, maybe, uh, I don't know, just very primitive. Very, a very primitive mindset to think that, like, you know, just killing everybody is gonna solve everything. You know... But but the problem with with Raito is that at the same time that he's so like small minded and like has like such a small perspective on the world that he really does have a very sharp intelligence. That's true. Like he 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 really like knows like uh, he was the best student of like he knows how to think, but he doesn't have a perspective on the world and. Um, that's where I think we should bring in L or Edu. Sure, yeah. Because Edu grew up in an orphanage in England. And he's also very, very intelligent on the same level as Raito. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But if, if not, um, well... <sighs> I hesitate to say if not more intelligent. I, I yeah, they're they're definitely equals. They're they're equals in in intelligence, uh, at least somewhat. You know, it's 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 very debatable to say which one is smarter. 
It's very debatable because uh, Raito had a magical um, book from the underworld, which Eru never could have like even imagined. Yeah. He just knows the real stuff. But at the same time, he did figure out. He did. He did like. Know, yeah, right? it is. It is crazy that L was able to piece together that something supernatural was happening in the first place, right? Because nobody else yeah. in the entire criminal justice uh, task force was even able to, like, they just were looking at it and they were like, why are all these people dying of heart attacks? Is there some illness going around? Is there some virus or something that's, you know, it, it, he was the first one to be like, no, this is a criminal. This is somebody that is deliberately, I don't know how they're doing it, but they have maybe some advanced technology or perhaps something supernatural. We don't know, but there's something behind this. There's a common thread. And that I, I think shows like an, almost inhuman level of intelligence, you know, it's just to be able to even think about something like that. When you, when you, when you say stuff like that, I think that uh, Edu is actually more intelligent than Kira. Sure. Uh, or, I can uh, totally Raito, see that, yeah. Uh, it's just that Raito had some, like, secret, like, like, that note, like, that nobody could think of. Like, if, if he tried to use any, like, real kind of like uh, ways of killing people he would have been figured out in like a few days right. but he had this like magical opportunity and it it's really insane that uh, edu was able to uh like figure out all of these things uh, like point him down join the same school touch his girlfriend's butt <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff yeah um uh, yeah, but, but yeah but i, I uh, I, yeah, it is really super impressive. And, you know, I guess we didn't even really piece it together until, uh, what was it? Uh, Linda L. Taylor, you know, that broadcast? Remember that? Lyndon L. Taylor, yes. That, 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 that is just a proof that he's above, actually, intellectually. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. like, like, well like, I don't think like, he would have done that in the first place if he was 100% confident that it, there was something supernatural going on. He did that as more of a bluff, right? Like, he, he put this, like, you know, person on death row that was going to die anyway, you know, just in case there was something supernatural happening. But he didn't, you know, do it with the anticipation that something was going to happen. And, like, when something did happen, he came over the speaker and he was like, wow, I can't believe you really did that. Holy shit. Uh, you're in big trouble now. We, we I know exactly what's going on I, I now. It just, proves, it just proves that L is very intellectually above him because if uh, Raito was more intelligent, he would like think it through. He would be yeah, like, he wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have written down his yeah. name, and that yeah. also shows you know a level of like just selfishness. Just like wow, that's L. That's the guy who's going after me. Well. He's not a criminal, but I'll write his name down anyway. Like, that's just, ugh. That's just, you know, the fact that Light just did that immediately, you know, without even stopping to consider all his options, you know, that kind of shows a level of, uh, uh, just kind of like Machiavellian, uh, selfishness in some way. So. And Raito takes a potato chip and, <laughs> and he, he eats, eats it. it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's uh, yeah. the yeah that's the best thing he does. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but I, I mean yeah. it was pretty uh, clever. Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of clever in the way that like you might cheat on an exam <laughs> to hide like a, a TV in a potato chip box. It's kind of clever and like oh I you know I have my answers written on my hand. Uh, the teacher won't see this. You know, it's kind of that level of clever. I would say. Um, uh, I I think. Um, and it's actually a good thing that L died or Eru died, um, because it just shows, um, like you're comparing an orphan who who grew up in a different country to somebody. His father was like a police officer or somebody, and he had all the money, he had all the chances in his life to to succeed. And Eru had nothing except his brain, and. It's, it's to me. It's amazing that that Eru has no hatred, mm. even though he knows he's Kira. He knows he he's the one. He has no hatred for him. He still respects him because he I, has the yeah. intelligence. 
Yeah, in the end, thinking about it, it was like it was like Elle's uh, kind of like seeing Light almost as a friend. I mean, the anime added a bunch of different scenes of like, you know, uh, Light washing Elle's feet, or was it the other way around? No, I think it was Elle washing Light's feet and just showing him like, you know, I think that you are a really smart guy. I enjoy being around you. You know, I don't know for sure if you're Kira. I'm like maybe 90% sure, but you know, I just you, wish you, you. I wish you I, would stop. No, no, you, you, you are, you are wrong here because he knew he's going to die. Oh, he knew he was okay. I'm, yeah, I might be misremembering. That, that, okay, that so night he, that night he knew he he was going to die. Um, and he basically just accepted his loss to Kira with a crazy magical weapon to him with his mind. Mm. And. It, it it even though if if it wasn't in the manga, it's a very touching scene when Raito like like sweeps off some sweat, like not sweat, like it was raining from his head, and he he cleans his feet, and then he massages his feet. Yeah, and I think it's like two two very intelligent persons being glad that they met. Yeah, and why do you think you? Uh... That is kind of, uh, like, because I don't see, like, that being a common thing, like, frankly, anywhere in the world, but especially Japan, uh, having, like, washing somebody else's feet. I have to think that was, like, a biblical reference. I have to think that was, like, Jesus washing uh, his disciples' feet, like, the day before, uh, like, before the Last Supper. Like, that level of symbolism. I have to think that, uh... Like L was washing Light's feet to say like, like I'm going to die. Yes, exactly because he was going to die that night. It's a very direct parallel. Like Jesus was washing his disciples' feet because he knew that Judas was about to betray him, and Light was washing. Uh, or sorry, L was washing Light's feet because he knew Light was about to betray him. Also, it's a very direct parallel. I I can't imagine that would that was unintentional because it does seem like a very strange scene, but. That has to be intentional. That has to be a direct, like, parallel between... Definitely. It, it definitely is. And it's very intimate. Like, um, I can't remember when somebody... It's not just washing the feet. It's, like, massaging the... Like, a, a real massage. Massage. Yeah. And and Wright also, like, goes, like, oh, oh. And he like, he's, like, feeling good. <laughs> and, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird <laughs> when you look at it at face value. It's it's very weird, but I get what they were going for, you know. It's it's not weird when you think that 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 L is so smart that he knew you won with your magical book. I'm going to die tonight, and I respect you and I enjoyed this mind game I had with you for the last few months. I enjoyed all of this. Yeah, we did, and yeah, because in the end, it wasn't L like trying to uh, like the author has said as much that l is not necessarily a good guy quote unquote he's just after the he's a, he's trying to solve cases because they're intellectually rewarding for him um so i would say yes uh, the fact that you know he respected l so much in the earth i get these two mixed up because they both start with l but the fact that l respected light so much in the end was directly because of the psychological warfare that ha they had been engaged in and the the cat and mouse game that they had um challenged each, each other to you know l is not the kind of character that's like you know looking to do the right thing all the time uh he's you know he'll do whatever it takes to solve the case and that that's l's character um it's it's I just wanted to say, but Risen already said it, it's it's similar to Akagi. Uh, when we were talking about Akagi, you said uh, because of his intelligence, he feels so lonely mm. because he can't connect to anyone. Yeah. And I guess I guess L or Edu was so happy to just, whatever it was, like it doesn't even have to be like that he's justice and he's trying to bring down. It was just him enjoying like having this mind game with somebody. And I guess he was grateful for he died. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's very similar. Yeah. Uh, Akagi, you know, is like 
that in some sense. You know, he doesn't necessarily care about, you know, defeating Washizu as much as, like, being engaged in this intense psychological battle. And it's it's a very similar dynamic, I would say. Yeah, so you're absolutely right with that. Um, uh, the, 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 by the way, you said it was like a biblical reference. It might be very true because when uh, Edu dies, um, they are like very European, like church bells yeah. ringing. Well, yeah, I mean, there's got, there's like, I mean, I haven't watched it recently, but there's biblical references all throughout Death Note. And you even look at this uh, page that I have under today's topic on the screen. Like, that looks like freaking, like, light is being, like, crucified almost. And not even crucified. Maybe he's, like, an, an angel ascending to heaven or something. You know, it's it's all throughout, you know. Like, I think it's very deliberate, the biblical references that they place throughout. And it's... I'm not sure if it's uh meant to be, like, more symbolic or more ironic. The fact that, you know, there's all these biblical references. Like, the fact that there's this, like, kind of, like... I, well, I guess part of it is Light sees himself as a god, right? And so he, like, putting all these biblical references in is kind of, like, emphasizing that, he, you know, how much of a god complex he thinks he has. You know what? That might be it. Thinking about it, I think it's probably because uh, Light has such a god complex that, like, maybe he's hearing those church bells in his brain as he is dying, being like, how can I die? I'm freaking Jesus, you know? I'm freaking the Messiah for the new world, you know? How not, This can't be not, me. It's not, it's not the writer who heard the... It's uh, El, Edu, who heard the... Oh, messages. okay. Oh, but I thought there were church bells uh, during Light's final moments, too. I think he just saw some... Uh... Like the sky, I, I I don't think the because El grew up in England, so he was in churches. So he, uh, it's more like I like we can rewatch the last episode right now. But I don't <laughs> think that 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 right. I just think he saw like uh, Misa for a second. He saw like a little bit of sky and. Uh, regretted some stuff okay, okay. Like. all right well i do want to get this right though so so you're saying that like uh during the final scene with l is when the church bells are ringing. yes definitely when 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 l is dying he's thinking of churches and of the bell of england yeah that is interesting okay yeah. um because because you said that episode that episode uh with uh, with the uh, like uh, like cleaning his feet uh, and stuff uh, was similar to some biblical stuff uh, in this like the next episode when L dies when he has like his heart stroke he's just remembering like the orphanage from England where right. there are bells ringing mm. uh, in a church. Oh, okay. Well, that could be a recollection to. Um, you know, you know, kind of like. I, mean, I, I just want to say that you're probably right about about the cleaning feet. Um, uh, yeah, reference. It, it's just I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing this on the spot, so I can't give you a definite like. You know, if I thought about this for a while, I might be able to like come up with a better theory or something. But, um, I guess my first thought would <laughs> it like this isn't the kind of the the thought that I want to have, but it. <sighs> I don't even know if I should say this, honestly. No, I'm not going to say that. No, no, that's... Uh, I don't even want to go there. No, I'm not going to... I'm going to switch over to this one instead. I'm going to say that, uh, that, like, maybe he thought... He was recalling um, the bells in his orphanage because he was recollecting the, um, the times of going to church. And perhaps that's the reason why he chose to wash his feet is because he had heard that story um, as pretty much everybody in uh, the Western Hemisphere has of, you know, Jesus cleaning his disciples' feet at the Last Supper. Um, and he maybe thought to himself, like, I, I can't even say. I don't know. It's, it's it, There's something deep there. There's definitely something deep there. I, I don't know. He He thought, like, back to that time and my mind just keeps coming back to this, so I'm going to have to say it. Uh, 
maybe he was perhaps seeing something godly in light. That's that's something that I was like bumbling around this entire time trying not to say, but yeah, that that's a fair opinion. Uh, I don't I know. Mean, you know. I that's all I can think though. Like I've I've I you know I've spent the last like five minutes like rambling trying to buy time, but that's like literally all I can come up with is like maybe um, he saw some like he did like genuinely see like well you know what maybe light is the god of the new world. Which is kind of like dark to think about, but and, and he's evidently yeah. not. But you know, maybe in his final moments, he's like, "Well, you know what? Maybe it's okay that I'm dying here because you know, light's going to uh, save the world." <laughs> Which you know, in the end, he doesn't. But maybe yeah, that was what was yeah. going through light or, or L's mind in his final yeah. moments. That's what I've come yeah, up with in like on the spot here. So I it's don't a know. completely fair. It's a completely fair opinion, and I can't dispute it. Yeah. I just have a different opinion. Uh, the way I viewed it, and that's why the manga is great, is that you can look at it differently. Is that I just think that Edu was so lonely throughout throughout his whole life that mm. he was just, and that he. At the same time, realized I lost tonight. I'm gonna lose to this guy. Which and and I think that the whole like the thing like le- cleaning your feet was m- like maybe biblical, maybe maybe something like like Edu saying like you're right, like go on. But in my yeah. opinion, in my opinion, I'm. I'm going for the lonely, lonely, intelligent yeah. genius uh-huh. who's it, just glad that he that he met somebody who who could like match him in his intelligence. Yeah. And in either like, <laughs> in either case, it has to be that L respects light in his final moments. In either case, it has to be that you know L is like you know he's glad that you know he met somebody worthy enough to be his opponent, and he is accepting his fate and you know whether it was because he was lonely or because it might be a combination it might be that he's one he's lonely two he found a friend kind of or at least a psychological equal and three he's beginning to believe that you know what maybe light's way is right and you know in any case i've lost so i'm just gonna go out you know believing that you know maybe light's way is the right way i don't necessarily have that strong of a belief in my uh like idea of like what should be done with criminals anyway so i'll just accept that you know light's gonna kill me tonight and you know hopefully that's for the better good you know it's it's gotta be something like that you know something in that um well you 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 can basically decide for yourself um yeah uh, be- because it's it's a very well written story. Yeah. For me, for example, I'll just I'll just summarize it very very briefly. I think what happened with L and Kira or Raito is that L was smarter than him, but Raito had some gimmicks that he just didn't know about. And right, like the all end, the various rules, and he even made up like yeah. new rules that threw him for loops and stuff it was yeah it was just a matter of like the death note being too incomprehensible to him for him to even like because he was you know as far as like human world stuff goes like l is untouchable like you can't beat l if you're um you know stuck in like human you know things that humans are capable of but once you start bringing supernatural elements into it like he he was just out of his league you know so in some sense the deck was stacked against him in the end. Yeah, and I was trying to say yeah, sorry. that... Uh, Go ahead. I, 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 you know, when I have a thought, I have to freaking vocalize it before I forget of it. Course. Of course, that's a podcast. Of yeah. course, no problem. Um, but um, when I see that scene and when I think about it, what I think, what I get, and I might be wrong and maybe am probably wrong, but all I'm getting is Bell was an orphan. He doesn't have any family. 
he's very intelligent. He couldn't connect to anybody around him. And he finally met his match with Raito. He realizes, I'm going to die tonight. And he's like, you won, but thank you for the fun we had. And right. I'm going to clean your, I'm going to clean your feet. Even Raito, I'm going to wipe away the water from your head. Yeah. Like this, this small gestures um, of respect, of, of caring, which they usually don't do because they're just thinking. They're, all they're doing in their life is like just rationalizing, thinking, logic. Yeah. And this is the only moment where, where you see some like gestures which are like nice to each other. Yeah. And, and very, yeah, it kind of shows Elle's, uh, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily want to say humanity. Um, if, 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 uh, and the way I get the, the, the bells in the churches from England is that he just remembers that he's an orphan without mm-hmm. anybody and that he's glad that he had finally somebody who matched him in his intelligence and he's just happy about it. Yeah. And that's just my crazy opinion and it's probably wrong but that's how i got it i mean that's what yeah, no it, i mean like it was they didn't explain it on purpose so that we could have like theories and opinions and stuff like that so yeah i think that's a perfectly valid uh interpretation as well so yeah so did uh missa like Kill herself, or did he kill her? Uh, Misa? Uh, oh, I don't remember. Yeah, um, he might, might, might have not di- di- died at all, but he found another uh, girlfriend or wife. Um, wasn't she around for a while, even after Elle passed away? Like, he, like she, like he well, because, her, no, like, because uh, uh, her Shinigami, I forget uh, her Shinigami's name, but uh, uh, she sacrificed herself so that Misa would live on. I remember that. And that was like around the time that L uh died. Um so Misa must have been around for a little bit longer after that. Um I the second part longer, is though. basically about about this um uh woman on the TV which uh became his wife and uh Nia and uh Melo um after that after L dies. Uh, it's like even like 3 years later, 2 years later, 4 yeah. years later. It just yeah, like he definitely snapped. does get a new girlfriend at some point. <laughs> yeah, um, and she uses her. He she uses he uses her more like uh, more than Misa, but um, I I think when 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 Raito dies, Misa is like singing a song because she's so fucked up in the head from all what happened. Yeah, she's so traumatized about everything right uh, and if and something happens. happens like this in your life you're going to be traumatized so you know that's you know it's fun to uh it's fun to explore in media but you would never actually want this to happen to you <laughs> for sure um and she 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 he she uh he finds like this uh, personality like tv personality i guess uh as a new yeah, she was like a news that- anchor or something yeah, and she was like doing the stuff for him, and he finds Mikami, the crazy fanboy, like, oh yeah, you're doing uh, everything right, uh, like this crazy person. Um, and you mentioned and that you like Mikami. Who like Mikami? You. Yeah, the, uh, I didn't. Like him. I just th- think he's like interesting. Okay. I, th- I thought there was like a specific reason why you liked him in particular. Yeah, I just th- I just thought when I when I talked about him, I just thought that it's interesting and it's probably true that not just one, probably more people would be like uh, bowing down to this like Kira and like being like, "You're the god!" Like we we respect you. Like well, I yeah. If follow- the, I mean, in any society, if there's like a someone who ha- holds overwhelming power, right? Like, you know, whether it's a death note or, you know, a dictatorship or something like that, they're always going to have, like, you know, fans who are um, obsessed with them and, like, in, 
maybe in some subconscious level, like hoping that they can get some of that power. Um, but also, you know, you know, kind of also just giving into like the fear, I would say giving into like the, you know, just being like, well, I mean, I, I have to like this guy because like he knows what's best because he has all this power. So he must know what's best. Or something like that. Uh, do you have a different interpretation? Do you, it, uh, like what? What do you think is driving his uh, obsession with light? Mikami was basically, uh, as I remember, a very like uh, strict, follow the rules guy, and he was like basically very. Oh, so could could it be that his like views of uh, of morality kind of lined up with lights? Yeah, I think I think okay. if he if yeah, yeah. He, if he got the death note, he would be the same. I think. Yeah, um, yeah. They were very similar uh, personalities. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I like I, I'm not liking uh, like the character of Mikami because of Mikami. I just liked that at the end when Nia like just says like you're a fucking piece of shit. You're mm -hmm. nobody. You're a murderer, and <laughs> Mikami just goes crazy and he realizes. Like yeah, that like doesn't god. know everything. That he's not this yeah. like supernatural god. That oh crap, we're done. You know, and um, it's it's Mikami, Mikami was calling him god, and at at, at 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 the final episode and in the last chapters, Mikami's like god, god. He's calling him god all the time. And yeah, he finally sees that he's just a fucking piece of yeah, shit a, a quivering yeah. mess like freaking he's he's even done his last resort of like having the um death note paper like in his watch and he pops that open but like oh and i love the badass moment where uh uh matsuda that's his name matsuda he freaking like uh, he's also kind of a force of chaos like mellow like uh matsuda even from the beginning he's always going out of his way and doing like um things like without thinking them through I love the badass moment where he sees Light about to freaking write Nier's name on the Death Note, and he freaking takes his gun and he shoots his hand. I uh, I just feel like, you know, it wouldn't be like so cathartic if I didn't dislike Light. <laughs> you know, it, which is a good thing about the series, is that like you can see the final scene in any way you want. Like, if you sympathize more with Light, then you see that as, oh, crap, oh, what a, what a, like, asshole, why would he do that? But I see that, and I'm like, yes, get him, you know, and, you know. So that's a, that's a really memorable, like, I, I love that he stood up for himself, and he did something in the heat of the moment, and he, you know, played his part at the very end. <laughs> the end of that note is perfect because yeah. if you watch it as a kid, you're gonna be like, as I told you before, you're gonna be like, no, Daito, get a get, get, right, get yeah, somehow out. Like, yeah. If you like, sympathize with out. light, yeah, you're gonna see it a different way. <laughs> yeah, and when I watch it like recently, it's like, kill him, kill him, kill right. this fucking. Yeah, he's, it's, he's gone monster. way too far, like a and, thousand and, and, times and, over the line, you know. Over the course and, of his life, all of these like different expressions of characters, like not just Matsuda, it's like all of these people in the in the room. You see their expression when he's like having this, like, like I, I, I killed, I, I'm, I'm the god of the new world, like I, I, I created a better world. I'm, I'm, and they're just looking at him like he's a fucking maniac, like, right? Yeah, and he's acting like a maniac in that moment, and I feel like that's the moment that even the diehard, like, Light fans, kind of, uh, it's it's kind of like over the course of the series, we only see Light through his, like, persona, through his, like, manipulative, like, like smug, like, little persona. That's the only moment where we see Light actually break down and show us how crazy he is, which is, you know, very eye-opening, I feel like, and it's something that probably, like, turned a lot of people off off at first because they were like wait but light's not like this but that's the whole point he was always like that and he was just hiding it behind this like uh manipulative exterior you know that's why i love the show because it can convince you to root for somebody who's actually very bad uh for you after a while to realize they were actually very bad and yeah like, and that's what makes like, it worth re-watching as well like you know 
maybe two, three, four more times to like really, you know, see, okay, here's the clues of like where Light's character was. Like, why did he do this? Why did he do that? Like the first time you see it, you're like, okay, well, he's just, you know, furthering his goals. But you really see, like once you understand Light's character more, you really see like, okay, he's, yeah, he's being really manipulative here. He's being kind of narcissistic here. He's being borderline sociopathic here. You know, it's, it's very, uh, it's it's interesting to see on a even as you grow up and you learn more about the world like it's it's worth revisiting just to see that you know and also all the mind games that you may have forgotten definitely um my favorite line uh from the end was um um when nia said to 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 kira or raito uh tadano Satsujin. I don't know Satsujin. You're just a murderer. Yeah. You're just a murderer. Like, like that's all you are. And he has all of these like concepts in 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 his head that he's like, I I made a better world. I did all of these things. Like respect me. Uh, uh like uh, like I'm the best. Like look at me and like no, you're yeah. you're just a murderer. And I mean, the sad thing is he couldn't have got there without all of his loving supporters, right? Like Mikami and Misa and uh, all those people, you know, that were constantly reaffirming that he was right. Like at first, like at the beginning of the story, he's questioning everything he does. But by the end, like he has so many freaking supporters that like are with him that he lets it get to his head and he doesn't listen to like any of the news media that are calling him like, you know, the Satsujin. Um, but it, it's that moment where near confronts him with the fact that you know no in the as far as the world is concerned you are just a murderer and that's what really gets to him because that kind of shatters his entire worldview that he's been like building up throughout the series yeah i i i I, I think it's just a beautiful imagery because he's like literally like being like a maniac going crazy like uh, and the voice actors as as uh Rissen three three nine said the voice yeah. actor the voice acting is great. He's like, like in Japanese at least, he's like crying like, like look at me, I cry like I created this world. Like there's le- less cr- crimes, like everything. Like look at me, I'm the yeah. Guy. Just hearing the like voice breaks in his line, he did such a good job with yeah. uh, that voice acting for sure. Yeah, and 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 just like the calmness, and that's why Nia is my favorite character. Mm-hmm. He's just like holding these like little three finger puppets, and he's like, "No, you're just a murderer. Fuck you. That's yeah. all you are." Yeah, he doesn't even that's care that he's freaking like in hysterics, like screaming, laughing maniacally, like some kind of super villain. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, "No, <laughs> you're going to jail." And I guess I were they going to take him to jail in the end before uh, Duke wrote his name down? They, 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 well, because it was mostly police officers in the in the room, they would have like just like uh, I think like even like uh, Matsuda or somebody just like approached him and said, uh, "Put these cows on you and turn yourself in. Let us like judge you for all you've done." And he's like running away. And the, yeah. and the best part is, and the best part is, I didn't understand this as a kid or as a teenager, but the best part is when he's running away with his like with his with his wounds from uh, Matsuda, um, just running away and like you could like just feel and see that everything he thought was so wrong, everything fell apart, and. Then he was sitting at some like water tank or something um, on some stairs, um, and yeah, I think I remember. And instead of instead of getting like arrested or dying of natural like uh, like from the wounds, he just like Ryuk Ryuku just writes his name like it was fun. You lost. Yeah. Bye. Right, and that now that is a point of contention because like. Uh, People debate whether the manga, the anime, or the live action did it better. Um, and I have to, th- I, th- I think, um, I think in the manga, like, Dirk writes his name down before he even, uh, like, runs out of the, I don't think he even runs out of the building in the manga. 
I think literally, like, yeah, like, Light is, like, pleading to Ryuk, like, please, get me out of this, write their names down, write all of their names down right now, you have the Shinigami eyes, don't you write all of their names down, do it, you wanna see more, don't you? And Ryuk is like, oh, I'm writing a name down, I'm writing your name down, and he shows it, shows it to him, and, you know, and it's just like, the game's over, man, you lost, there's no more fun in this for me anymore, um... And, uh, I think, yeah, I think it's pretty similar in the live action, too. Uh, yeah, because the anime, like, does it more dramatically and has, like, I think that, like, yeah, Light runs out of the building and, you know, Ryuk finds him later and just, you know, ends his misery. But I feel like it was much more dramatic in the manga. I feel like it was a much more, um, satisfying just scene to just see, like, Light pleading with his last hope, you know, the Shinigami that gave him these powers in the first place. And even he is, like... Nope, you gone too far, buddy. <laughs> you, nope, I no, nothing I can do. You freaking, you're at the end of your rope. Game over. I, I gotta, I, I gotta agree. The 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 mahjong is definitely better at, at the end, but uh, the mahjong. Uh, the I think you just manga. said mahjong, dude. <laughs> you meant manga, right? <laughs> we're going okay. So we're this. These are bookends. So yes, the, at, like at, as soon as light runs out of the building, he's bleeding from his room. Like real, like grabs uh, grabs a like mahjong set, plops it down on the table, and is like Sashiuma. <laughs> and he starts like doing that. That's how it ends. In our version, I guess I, I, I guess I play so much mahjong lately that it's. I know. Yes, I get it. I, like head. I've probably had like a hundred like flips of the tongue like this whole podcast. That was just an especially like funny one. <laughs> okay, but but the, the end, I I agree the end of the manga is better probably, yeah. like more realistic. But I also enjoy the the anime ending because in the anime ending he has like some some like little clips. He he actually thinks of Misa in the end, like just for one second, and 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 I I even think like his 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 father or somebody. And, yeah, oh, and we didn't even talk about his father, but and he, he dies so he dies so pathetically. Basically, yeah. he just he's just dying like like anybody, anybody help me, save me, and no, it's yeah, he like, dies like the human that he is, like the mere human that he really is, and that's probably where yeah, that's probably why he gets all these flashbacks like of the life that he could have had if he only accepted that he was human, you know, he could have like, you know, lived with his, not lived with his, uh, or like had been respected by his father instead of being hated and hunted down by his father. You know, he could have had a nice girlfriend. He could have had a nice life, you know, all this stuff. But instead he chose to give into the dark power to give into the, uh, to the demons and, you know, selfishly try and change the world, you know? So, it is kind of because, a because uh, he thought he's Segi. Nobody is Segi. Segi, justice, yeah. Nobody is justice. Justice is something which we all decide. Everybody has to decide on justice. You right. Can't... It's a yeah. It's a it's a human thing. It's not an individual thing. It's yes. You can't just be somebody who lays down. There are so many people you, you you can't be like that. That's a wrong life, right? And he wasted his potential. He could have been. Uh, I think he said he want to be a lawyer. I think he want to be a like policeman officer. Yeah, like his dad. Yes, um, but you're not the one. You. That's why, for example, in America, it takes. Uh, 12 people to decide um, right yeah because it's not cut and dry you know it's not as simple as like you know somebody said he did it so he must have done it although i do feel like that is a kind of mindset that japanese people in particular have um of like because like the conviction rate in japan if in case you didn't know is a lot higher because like typically what it is is like I think like 99.5 or 99.7% of, um, of, uh, trials end in a guilty verdict in Japan, uh, because like the jury just assumes, well, people are saying that this guy did it, so he must've done it, you know, which is, 
unfortunately, uh, not always the case, you know, but it is kind of like, I think it comes from their like group mindset of like, you know, cooperation. So they, they will trust like the police officers, like a hundred percent, um, because you know, they're looking after like the populace and they'll never doubt something that they say, unless, you know, there's very strong evidence to doubt that. Whereas I would say in most parts of the rest of the world, it's, it's more like, you know, well, the police officers are saying this, but let's listen, you know, let's figure out the truth of the situation. I don't know. I, I don't even know where I'm going with it, except that maybe, um, it's more of an understandable mindset <laughs> in Japan, kind of, not really. You're, you're right. And in, in Japan, most uh, cases uh, are, as you said, 95% or something uh, are just convicted and that's all. Because it's just like socially accepted, like, oh, oh, we all agree he did it, even if he didn't did it. Uh, in Europe, we have a system where the judge decides at the end of the trial, he says guilty or not guilty. Hmm. In America, you have a, a jury of 12 people who say if, it, if, if, if the person is guilty or not guilty, but... You having a super weapon in your hand and deciding by yourself who is guilty and who, who who should die. Right. It's just, you know, it's... It's just not right. <laughs> I want to say it, like, more eloquently than that, but I can't really think of anything. Um, you can't decide who should live or not. That's, I think... Yeah, no one can. Important. Yeah, it, it's... It's something that has to be taken very seriously, and like only only God can judge us. Like after after we die, the real God. <laughs> but whatever, <laughs> that's that's just me. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, for the people who are not religious or religious, um, at the end of the day, only somebody higher can actually judge us. Right. One yeah. person can't judge another person. It's not possible. None of us way. have the knowledge necessary to make accurate judgments. Definitely, yes. But uh, I'm sorry to do this, but uh, this podcast has been two hours, and I got to go uh, pick up my car. Um, that was what the phone call was about, like, halfway through. Um, they have my car, and they're closing it for, so... Uh, I feel like we reached kind of a stopping point here anyway. Um, oh, they're calling me again. Oh, boy. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, bye for time, Rinchan. Say something. All right. Um, thank you for listening to us uh, at the ninth podcast of us. Uh, we are going to do another podcast on Saturday, definitely. This one might have been a little bit disappointing because all of our fans are mostly like Mahjong fans or Fukumoto Crazy fans. It might have been a little disappointing, but um, we are going to keep doing it. We like talking with each other. It's going to happen again. Um, if you like it too, YouTube, Twitch, follow Sonic. I have also my own blog, but that's not that important. Um, but it's very follow important. Sonic. Follow, follow Rinchan's uh, blog. <laughs> Leave lots um, of nice comments for him. Yeah, uh, definitely. Like, um, I'm so happy we managed to have a podcast. At the beginning, as always, you said, yeah, <laughs> like, what are we going to talk about? I remembered more than I remembered I remembered, if that's a proper sentence. Yeah, and, 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 and at the beginning, you, you, like, baffled me with the question, what would I do with a death note? And I had to, re to really think about it. Uh, that that was interesting. Uh, Risen, 339, uh, what did you think about the music? He's asking what you. Did I do? Yeah, well, I don't know why exactly me, but... Uh, I think the music was in that note very, 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 very good because it had this like um, 
it had like this theme with where where it's like uh, like this mysterious like yeah. and then like this and like, uh, it 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 was very good music yeah i remember uh death note and kaiji were both written by the same guy uh taniuchi hideki what? i think his name is oh that's, i still that's, have that's no idea what's going on with him i think he's still in jail but for marijuana but yeah he he was brilliant <sighs> And, um, yeah, I remember playing the Death Note soundtrack, uh, all the time, uh, when I was younger, because I liked it a lot, especially Light's theme. He also asked, asked about Akagi, Akagi, of course. Well, Akagi was, was made by the same, uh, the soundtrack for Akagi was made by the same guy, yeah, is what he's saying. it's very similar, it's like this, it's like this, like, thrilling, kind of, like, anticipating, like, what's gonna happen next, it's, like, keeping you on the edge. Yeah, for sure. I yeah, and very jazzy too. Yeah, yeah. I love the music, like in Akagi. I love the music in uh, Kaiji. I love the music in Death Note. They uh, contribute a lot to the to the atmosphere. And one more thing before we go for the car. Yeah. Can I can I announce it officially? Announce what? Headset. Is here. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Headset is here. You just need to go pick it up. So next, next time, next time I'm gonna be a lot better on the mic. I'm gonna be a lot, a lot more audible. So new mic is here. Yes. So <laughs> just not right now, but I just hope it. Podcast. I just hope it's it works and it's good. It's it should be. You know, I looked at it and I was like, you know, this seems like you know. A good affordable mic um but we'll just have to test it and see um but hopefully it works it's out okay definitely, it's definitely better than a webcam from uh 1995 or something oh like yeah that. oh is it that old okay <laughs> i don't know this, this piece of shit I, I i'm looking at it um it's very old it's very old uh, probably like 2015 or something, but it's very old. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm I'm glad we got you a new one. Um. So yeah, look forward to the next uh, episode. Uh, I think we know what we're gonna do, but we'll see if we have enough time to prepare for it. Uh, this this episode was kind of just out of necessity because we've both been very busy. But um, don't say that. Don't say that. I mean, it was a good episode. I don't deny. Like we did it. You know, we pick the right topic for sure. Um, but uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, we should talk every week about something about manga because we're the manga bums, right? But there's only so many manga that we have both read at the same time, uh, and that we yeah. wouldn't have to like one of us read. So, you know. Yes, but some manga have like uh, three episodes or something. Um, so. I guess, yeah, we could cover, uh, <laughs> we could cover uh, Korinai Samba by Fukumoto. That hasn't even been translated yet. That's the only one that I know that's three chapters. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> any, in any case, I gotta go. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just gotta go. I gotta go pick up my car. So, um, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, thanks to Rinchan for doing this with me, and thanks to Rissen for sticking around for this whole podcast. That was cool. Um, thank you, thank, thank you guys a lot. Um, um, if this episode wasn't so exciting to you, we promise uh, we'll do better. Um, it's just the last two weeks we both have stuff in real life, which is kind of like a little bit like a little bit like distracting. But don't worry. We'll get back to the juicy, meaty stuff very soon. Very much so. Yeah, I think this was good, though. I, I mean, in my opinion, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what people think. Uh, we'll see on you. Ted, yeah. th th thank you, Sonic. All right, thank you, Rinshan, and thanks to everybody. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.